From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News Weekend Edition. Good evening and welcome to our Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. I'm Katie Looper. Our top story tonight. Alaska Governor Bill Walker met Thursday in Washington, D.C. with Pentagon officials to make a case for maintaining current troop levels in the state. Walker stressed Alaska's strategic importance, especially with Russia enhancing its military presence in the Arctic. Army officials announced two weeks ago that they planned a reduction of about 2,600 troops at Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson in Anchorage and 75 troops at Fort Wainwright in Fairbanks. The Anchorage base is one of six domestic bases that will lose 1,200 or more soldiers as part of a cost savings plan to reduce the active duty force by 40,000 troops over two years. Walker on Thursday reviewed criteria for making cuts with Catherine Hammock, Assistant Secretary of the Army for Installations, Energy and Environment, and in separate meeting, her Air Force equivalent. You know, we talked uh, this morning about the uh, sequestration impact on the uh, military uh, sort of drawdown, and our state has certainly uh, uh, been, been uh, impacted by that. I spent uh, about half of yesterday at the Pentagon, meeting with various uh, undersecretaries of the Army and the Air Force to uh, talk about the uh, military drawdown, but, it, but the impact of sequestration is having on the military. The flag of Mississippi is again flying on the University of Alaska Fairbanks campus. The flag was taken down Monday by order of Chancellor Brian Rogers because of the national controversy about it. He reportedly had it put back up because of the response he got on Facebook. He said he was reluctantly having the flag put back at the circle of flags on campus, feeling it was in the best interest of the university. Two Wasilla motorcyclists were killed and another person critically injured in a head-on collision on the Glen Highway Friday. Adam Johnson and David Hecker, both 21 years old, were traveling north from Anchorage at a high rate of speed when they struck a southbound Honda Odyssey. A passenger in the vehicle who was not identified suffered life-threatening injuries and was transported by helicopter to Matsu Regional Medical Center. The incident is under investigation. Hunters and others venturing into the backcountry in the vicinity of the Aggie Creek Fire along the Elliott Highway north of Fairbanks are advised to keep an eye out for firefighters still working in the area. Alaska Division of Forestry firefighting personnel have reported encountering hunters in the area and ask individuals use caution if they're traveling on roads or trails within the fire perimeter. While there are no roads or trail closures in effect, there are still more than 160 firefighting personnel working in the area. The 31,705-acre Aggie Creek Fire, located approximately 40 miles north of Fairbanks, started on June 22nd as a result of lightning. And a homeless woman has been indicted by a grand jury after an alleged hatchet assault. 26-year-old Deanna Chilligan was indicted on Thursday on charges including felony assault, misdemeanor assault, and negligent burning. According to court documents, on June 22nd, Chilligan became enraged and attacked her boyfriend after he tried to break up with her. The victim told police she tried to stab him with a knife and later hit him with a hatchet. Chilligan is also charged with negligent burning for attempting to light his vehicle on fire. If you feel a few rumbles in the neighborhood, there's no need to worry. Contractors on the University of Alaska Fairbanks Combined Heat and Power Plant Project have begun compacting the soil at the construction site. Fibro compaction will be taking place from 4 a.m. to midnight Monday through Saturday for about six weeks. This method is a ground improvement technique that hardens soil by means of downhole vibrator. After the process is complete, workers will insulate the site to prevent deep frost penetration and resume preparations for pouring foundation next March. Senior project manager says he's been working on the project for 10 years and it feels good to get moving again. Run water and a vibratory hammer down on a 10-foot grid across the site to consolidate the soils and make them stable for uh, seismic purposes. We are vibrating the ground and the energy is pretty low. It's it's very unlikely anybody would feel anything, but if you should, you could call 474-7000 and, and let us know. 
When we come back, thousands of locals gather to watch the Golden Days Parade. We'll have the details. Also, the Golden Wheel Summer Spectacular is up and running with rides and vendors. Those stories and more when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. The University of Alaska Museum of the North says researchers have confirmed the discovery of a marine reptile fossil in the Talkeetna Mountains. Fossil bones of an elasmosaur were found by Anchorage-based fossil collector Kervin Metzler over several years. Earth Sciences curator Patrick Druckenmiller says the curator's creatures had extremely long necks and two pairs of paddle-like limbs that they used for swimming underwater. Metzler and Druckenmiller and others visited the site in June. The museum says they identified the source of the bones in the hillside and collected much of the skeleton. Druckenmiller says it's the first time an elasmosaur has ever been discovered in Alaska. Two other types of ancient marine reptiles have been discovered in Alaska. Market and communications manager Teresa Baker says it's incredibly exciting to have specimens discovered all around the state. Our curator Pat Druckenmiller, he was able finally, after knowing about this species, he was finally able to go to the site and recover a portion of the skeleton, which is awesome, and bring it back to the museum. The hope is that he will be able to return and get the rest of the skeleton, but in the meantime, there are awesome new fossils to study and try to figure out and maybe see if it's even a, a new a species of elasmosaur. The rides are up and running and the dough is deep frying at the Golden Wheel Summer Spectacular. Golden Wheel Amusements, an Alaskan-based carnival, has transported about 20 rides that many have come to know and love. They have been coming to Fairbanks for nearly 40 years, but just these past two summers have they offered their own carnival separate from the fair. But of course, no carnival is complete without tempting fair food in massive proportions. They've got a mix of local vendors selling classic fair food, such as kettle corn, elephant ears, corn dogs, and curly fries. The amusement park not only offers enticing food, but rides and an unusual array of performers. Entertainment for musicians, jugglers, acrobats, and art aerialists is free every day with admission. They are located at Ice Alaska and will be open until August 2nd from noon until 10. We've been coming to Fairbanks now for about 37 years. So we're, we're deeply rooted in the city. And, uh, and we couldn't see doing anything other than coming up and, and offering entertainment to the city. Uh, we, we just, it's not an option. We're here and we're here to stay. Um, obviously, it's, it's really sunny and warm outside. Just want to come out and have people take advantage of that. You know, get some ice cream, walk around, see the beautiful flowers and enjoy the performers. I, I can't think of any better way to spend the weekend. Thousands of spectators showed up to watch the annual Golden Days Parade. This week, Fairbanks celebrates its Golden Days history with a parade, games, food and events. Golden Days is an event hosted by the Greater Fairbanks Chamber of Commerce. And dozens of local groups, organizations and political candidates met at the Carlson Center this morning in the walked or rode through the downtown parade route, waving and passing out candy. The annual parade celebrates the founding of Fairbanks in 1902 thanks to the good luck of a gold miner named Felix Pedro, volunteers throughout the community donate their time to run the Golden Days Jail. They're called the Midnight Sun Marshals and Madams. They dress up every year in period costumes and then drive around arresting people in the fun spirit of Golden Days. It's a great photo op for the locals and tourists who love to play along. Most of the arrests are, you know, during the week when we're going around nabbing people, selling the garters and pens, and it's always fun. A lot of people play along, a lot of people don't understand, and we explain it to them, and they absolutely love it. We are all volunteers. Um, the more people, the more we can get the word spread. You know, the tradition's kind of dying down, not too many people understand, so, you know, getting the word out there and letting everybody know what Golden Days is about, you know? It's a tradition. We have to keep it going. This summer, KTVF and Crown Real Estate are partnering up for a food drive in order to help feed kids in the summer. The food bank is requesting kid-friendly food items such as granola bars, juice boxes, applesauce cups, cereals and crackers and to feed kids in the summer who won't be able to rely on free school lunches. Drop-off locations are open downtown at the KTVF sales office and Crown Real Estate until the end of the weekend. Ann Weaver from the Fairbanks Food Bank says these past few weeks have been a great success and thanks to everyone who has donated so far. 
The intent of this event is it's, it's so easy in these beautiful summer months to forget that there's a lot of kids that rely on school lunches in order to be able to eat during the days. And so without school, that means no school lunch. So Ginger and Channel 11 came together to say, you know what, um, we need to make sure that those kids still have a good summer. I'm so impressed to be a part of a community that supports each other so much. I really want to say thank you because my goodness, um, this this isn't this isn't the normal community. This it, this is a really special you know interior heart, interior Alaska. Um, this is really special, and I really want to say thank you to everybody. Mike Fossil is coming up next with all your local sports action. Stay tuned. And welcome back sports fans, Mike Fussell here with your latest local action. It's been a very busy weekend for athletes throughout the interior. The Fairbanks Gold Panthers stepped to the plate for the last home game of the season earlier today. The Panthers took on the Anchorage Glacier Pilots at Groudon Memorial Park. The Fairbanks team was the first to strike, tallying two runs in the second inning. But the Pilots would answer back pretty quickly. They would score three in the top of the third. That put them up by one point. They even snagged an out-of-the-park home run. The game stayed close until the final inning, but the Pilots would ultimately fly off with the 8-4 win. And the Gold Panthers also played yesterday evening against the Glacier Pilots. Things were a little bit more difficult then, though, as they struggled defensively, allowing 11 runs. While the Panthers would only tally one themselves, Austin O'Bannon hit the lone run for the Fairbanks team. The Pilots' Drake Robison pitched seven innings, allowing only three hits and one run with an ERA of 1.6. The Gold Panthers will only play two different teams. That's the Bucks and the Oilers for the remainder of their season, which will consist of 10 games on the road. And athletes at the Sourdough Triathlon got a taste of the Alaskan surf and turf earlier today. Competitors duked it out in a half Ironman, which consisted of a 1.2-mile swim, a 56-mile bike ride, and a half marathon run at 13.1 miles. The race was a USAT-sanctioned event. 34 individuals and two relay teams were among the field that kicked up dust near mile 30 of the Steeves Highway. Kinsey Lane came out of the water first in the swimming portion at 22 minutes and 19 seconds. Mick Baker was exactly two minutes behind her in the number two slot. Wind conditions proved to be good for cyclists on that leg of the race, and Tyson Flaherty was on top at the second transition headed into the run. But we'll have full results from the Sourdough Triathlon during the weekend recap on Monday. And today marks the second round of the Fairbanks Amateur Golf Championships. Competitors took to the green at the North Star Golf Club. Tee times kicked off at 8 a.m. with leader Scott Sikorsky swinging first. After day one, Sikorsky has a gross total of 74 points, but several other golfers were within striking distance of the number one spot. Drew Neighbors and C.J. Leonelli were both one point away from the top with a tally of 75. Four other golfers were within five points of Sikorsky as well. Play will continue through Sunday. And summertime is always a time for fun, but it's a time to learn some important life lessons as well. Some got the chance to learn from the experience of a former NFL player from Alaska. Today at Lily of the Valley Church, Daniel Hardy Jr. came out to speak to the youth and congregation. Hardy, a West Anchorage product, played tight end for the New Orleans Saints and was one of the top tight ends while at Idaho University. He was drafted in the seventh round by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2011. At the time, he was one of 10 Alaskans in the league. A knee injury ended his career, though, but he found solace in the Bible and the ministry. He used his scripture and his testimony to motivate others aspiring to be athletes. His message of hope and love resonated with our local and up-and-coming athletes. I'd say he put a, a good message on my life. Uh, I got influenced by it. You don't have to worry about being into the world. You can worry about putting God first in your life. And you don't have to worry about being a show for your friends or being a show for the girls. You just put God first and he'll direct your path and everything. I just try to encourage these kids and kids that I speak to, like anywhere I go, like a message of hope. Like if I can do it, I'm just a little skinny, goofy kid from Anchorage, Alaska. God bless me with the NFL. He opened that door, closed it, but then he opened so many other ones. And Fairbanks being the one that I get to come to and speak is just just like, I'm so honored and blessed. And both of the Golden Heart City's Legion baseball teams were on the road this weekend. And the Alaska Wild took on the Chugiak Mustangs in a midsummer doubleheader last night in Anchorage. The Mustangs stampeded their way through the defense of the Wild in Game 1. 
The third and fourth innings proved to be the tipping point for the Chugiak squad. They would rack up six points in each and hold the Wild to zero. Game one would finish early in a mercy roll situation, 13 to nothing. The Fairbanks team was not able to come back for revenge in the second game, though. Chugiak would get the W late Friday, 8 to 4, and win another game on Saturday, 13 to 3. The Fairbanks 49ers were also down south. They lost a close matchup against Juno, 3 to 1. And that about brings us to the buzzer for sports tonight. We'll have your full weather forecast coming up next with Katie Looper. Thanks for checking in, and we'll see you next weekend. Welcome back to our Saturday edition. So happy Golden Days, everybody. Yeah, yeah it looked like you had a, a great time out there earlier today. The, the weather looked nice and very golden sunshine. Can we expect to see that throughout the rest of the week? Yeah, it looks like another great week. Maybe a bit of rain showers like we saw today. But other than that, nice sunny sky, 70 degrees. Let's take a look at the Almanac for today, though. We got a recent high of 73, a recent low of 52. Our record high got up to 93 in 1960, 1955, and a record low of 40 in 1958. Now our sun rose at 428 this morning and sets at 1123 this evening. Our daylight equals 18 hours and 59 minutes altogether, giving us a loss of 7 minutes from yesterday. Now around the state today, rain showers in Juneau and Ketchikan, temperatures in the mid-60s. Same for Anchorage and Kodiak. Yet cloudier skies in Coal Bay and sunny skies in Bethel around 58 degrees. 52 in Nome and up there in Barrow, cloudy skies for them at 39. As for the Fairbanks area, 76 degrees with some partly sunny skies and rain showers. All right, down in lower 48, Seattle's raining with lightning at 69 degrees. As we move on down south, Las Vegas and Phoenix are really hot in the hundreds. Moving over to the east, Minneapolis is experiencing rain showers around 86 degrees. Same with New Orleans at 97. More rain showers in Miami at 88 and even more rain in New York at 85. As for next week, we can expect cooler temperatures in the north with a little bit of rain. As we move on down south, some thunderstorms in the New Mexico area, yet hot temperatures in the Midwest and Texas region. As we move over to the, more over to the east, spotty thunderstorms up there around the Great Lakes and just a lot of drenching thunderstorms in Florida. Moving up to the north, thunderstorms for the New York area as well. Now back in Alaska, mostly cloudy with scattered showers for Nome, Fort Yukon, and Barrow. Temperatures in the low 60s and mid 60s for Nome and Fort Yukon and 40 for Barrow. Moving down to the interior, isolated showers or thunderstorms across the region. Temperatures all around 60. Now moving down to the east, the partly patchy fog with a chance for rain in Juneau and Ketchikan. Temperatures in the mid to upper 50s. All right, on the west side of the state, we can see rain for Coal Bay and Bethel, partly cloudy at Kodiak. Temperatures around 60 for Kodiak and Bethel, and 53 in Coal Bay. Now lastly, for our south central region, rain showers for Homer, Anchorage, and Valdez. Temperatures in the upper 50s for Homer and Valdez, and 62 in Anchorage. For tonight's forecast, 52 degrees, cloudy skies with scattered rain showers. And for tomorrow, around 68 showers likely with some isolated thunderstorms but things are going to be looking up for the rest of the week nice temperatures in the 70s as for our nightly temperatures around 55 but hopefully we can expect those rain showers to move out right. i know we saw some pretty crazy action earlier today just pouring rain down yeah, here at the was, station it was raining cats and dogs with <laughs> extreme force it was crazy but you know you never know what you're going to get from moment to moment. I know it just and then like a couple minutes later we look out the window and blue skies and right. everything. Well that's perfect rainbow weather so maybe we'll see a rainbow. Oh yeah <laughs> we better look out. All right well that'll wrap up the Saturday edition of the Fairbanks TV News and we're glad you could join us. Join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. From all of us here at the News Center have a good night and happy golden days.